The Xeon files are the original drawings used to build many of Route 66's iconic neon signs. The drawings and the signs themselves are definitely the epitome of a, a period of time. It was a discovery that's a lot like finding a treasure. They have that aspect of being mid-century modern America. And currently, that work still has value. It's still inspirational in a number of different ways. We can make these everyday objects. They're signs. They're business signs. Um, but we can make them and did make them for a period of time in a way that added up to something more. The, the collection of them made Knob Hill. It made Route 66. It made these neon ways. These things that are still echoing in our memories. I had been contacting local sign companies because of a public art project I've been working on, and I needed to learn a lot about sign production processes, so I asked as many questions as I could and hung out at places like Xeon. When I asked to be taken to a certain building where they still make neon in much the same way that they used to, we passed a pallet that had metal drawers on it full of yellow envelopes. I bent down and picked one up, unfolded it and it was just really beautiful. It was hand done in pencil on vellum and it was a drawing from the late 50s or early 60s of a theater marquee in Grants, New Mexico, the West Theater. And it was just really stunningly beautiful, very carefully done. I spent the summer in my backyard with a mask on, with gloves, going through a thousand files. It was just this this sense of discovery of um, these lost gems, really, these um, beautiful pieces of paper. And they had mold on them, they had dust on them. And in some ways that actually made them even more beautiful. They had this kind of history and patina to them, just like the signs that re are remaining out there do. Um, some of the delight of those is that you can see that history. I knew what I had found because they were just in themselves very beautiful to look at and then they were intriguing because they were Route 66 signs. The Star Florist drawing has a spray, a wash of spray paint over it, which is obviously the spray paint that was used on the sign. It's the same color. Um, so they were out at the site. They're working drawings. They're not pictures in that sense. They're, they're vehicles for making signs. A working drawing is um, a document that the designers make to both figure out what the design is going to be, but uh, more importantly to communicate how to build it. I remember finding the Eddie's Inferno drawing, seeing the little devil on the board and the notes to the side, which is, turn up corners of mouth for slight smile. Um, and it's just this, in, this instruction between people who work together about how to make something. I see the signs as examples of craftspeople pushing the boundaries of what a material can do. The glass blowers were bored one day and they decided to make an actual noose. So the, the glass tube goes and it bends like a rope would and has 13 uh, rings around. It's quite a technical feat. They didn't do this for a job. They did this because they wanted to figure out if they could do it. 
And what's absolutely great about these is they're fun, they're delightful, um, that you see this sense of play that was displayed in the commercial realm on the street in a way that had this individuality to it, but collectively made the street. I realized how important these signs were, primarily from the sign shop workers. Almost all of them spoke of one particular sign in Albuquerque, the Terrace Drive-In. The owner of the drive-in came to Zeon Sign Shop and happened to see at the workstation of one of the designers a painting that he had done on his free time of a fiesta dancer. And he decided that that's what he wanted on his drive-in. And so the artist Keith Kent painted that same painting, I don't know how many feet tall, 18, 20 feet tall. They serve as catalysts for memories, but I also think they become markers, points of orientation for an entire community. It allows people to remember what came before. It allows for a depth of identity it allows for people who are newcomers to realize that there's an entire history behind or underneath what you see now. That is one of the reasons why when the signs disappear, when a collector buys them or they're torn down to make way for something new, that there is a, a missing that happens. One of the things I really hope that these help inspire is this sense that we can make the furniture of the street. Uh, we can remake it not as an industrial product, every manhole cover being exactly the same, every lamp post being exactly the same, but we can bring some of that joy and design and delight and individuality to the pieces we, we put in the street, the way we make those places. How do we as humans invest our full humanity in making things? and not just throwing things away or doing them as minimally as possible. <laughs>